Yo, what's going on, Dragon Ballers? Welcome back to another video. Today, we have green things to talk about. We see, we saw the green cards from set 10 over the course of last week. So today, I want to put it all in a video for you guys, talk about what I think about them. We're going to go over some of the commons and rares and uncommons today. Tomorrow, for time's sake, we'll go over the starter deck stuff and the SRs, which I think are actually really stupid strong. But anyway, guys, if you're new here, make sure to subscribe, hit that bell, so never miss a video. If you want to help support the channel, there are many free ways to do that during these trying times. You can always like the video, maybe share it, maybe watch an ad. And if you want to pre-order any of the cards you see in today's video, you can use my kickback link in the description below. All that stuff helps me out without costing you any extra money or time. That being said, guys, let's get right into this video. So we're starting off with the new Ginyu leader. So I figure we'll start off with the unawakened side first. That seems to make a little bit more sense. So Ginyu, when this card attacks, reveal the top card of your deck. If it's a green Ginyu force card with energy cost of two, you may play it, then draw one card. Okay, that's pretty dumb already. <laughs> play a free guy and then draw a card. That's really strong. But uh, I wonder, I don't remember exactly how this works. If you don't play the Ginyu Force, if you don't reveal Ginyu Force, can you still draw or is it all inclusive? I think you can still draw if you don't reveal the Ginyu Force, but I'm not totally sure. Awaken, release a four or less, or you have four or more Ginyu Force in play in your battle area. Draw two cards and flip this card over. So with that being a thing, unless there's like another Ginyu Force that spams them onto the board, I don't really see how you're going to awaken super early, but I mean, this leader is realistically only as good as the Ginyu Force characters are. So we'll see what they end up doing. Ginyu, new leader of the force. Auto when this card attacks, reveal the top card of your deck. If it's a green Ginyu Force card, then energy cost of two, you may play it, then draw one card. Same thing here. Uh, I don't think you need to show the Ginyu, but you might have to. Activate battle once per turn, pay a green, choose one green Ginyu Force card in your battle area, and it gets plus 10,000 power for the battle. Ginyu always does this. Ginyu always just boosts uh, Ginyu Force cards and Kind of weird that that's the same theme across all the different colors, but I mean, it is what it is. So now with that being said, we're finally going to see the other side of the Sun Goku leader. Auto, burst three, when this card attacks, draw one card. Auto, when one of your battle cards is KO'd, you may flip this card over. If you do, draw one card, then switch up to one of your energy to active mode. So again, kind of the same thing as the Vegito leader here. You kind of want to play those one drop blockers. There's like off the top of my head, there's a Krillin. There's probably a ton of one drop green blockers that you could play. Awaken really early when at least four or less, draw two and flip over. The Awaken side, burst three when this card attacks, draw one. Activate main slash battle once per turn. Place two cards from your life in your drop area. Choose all of your battle cards and your opponent's battle cards. Ignoring barrier, place them in the owner's drop area. So this is a really powerful effect. And I did talk about this later before, but we only knew the Awaken side. So knowing the unawakened side now where you can awaken probably like eight, to seven life really efficiently, uh, it's going to be a much stronger board wipe. You can probably resolve this board wipe twice per game and you'll probably leave yourself like four or three life. That's really, really good. That type of board wipe where you're not really using too much of a cost. Like, like, yeah, critting two life is a big cost, but when you're awakening at eight to seven life, that's really strong. So very, very good there. This leader can definitely be very good. It kind of makes me think that mono green can potentially come back into or at least maybe be meta for the first time uh, mono green i guess you could say cell chain was mono green meta but that was a very very specific mono green deck so demigra unison of sorcery the first non-black demigra card if i am correct so it's a one drop unison we don't really see this very often permanent if this card would lose a marker from an opponent's attack you may add one card from life to your hand instead that's super strong like this card basically can't be removed from the board by your opponent attacking it they have to either use an effect to remove it or, you know, basically, I think that's the only way they can get rid of it. And that's really, really good. So plus one activate mains card gets plus 10,000 power for the turn. One drop 15K attacker. Very, very good. Minus three activate main. Choose one of your opponent's battle cards. KO it. Then choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards when it costs three or less. Ignoring barrier and KO it. This isn't the most flashy unison card, but it's actually so strong because you get the 115 beater. That's super good, especially against decks to self-awaken a lot because for one energy, you are getting a threatening attacker that they can't remove by just swinging at it. That's really good. And then minus three effect, you remove two of your opponent's battle cards. It's super huge value. Uh, I'm a really big fan of this card. I think this will see a lot of play in green decks. All right, so on to an uncommon Frieza Cosmic Horror. Four drop 20K dual attack. When this card's played, choose one. You can either choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards and KO it, or you can choose up to one of your opponent's using cards and remove a marker from it. So whenever you see a four drop or lower Frieza, you always have to be thinking about Dende Wish because they can play four drop Friezes for either two or zero energy. So this is actually pretty cool because it's a, you know, either free or two energy removal, or you can remove a marker and it's a dual attacker, which is pretty cool. Moving on, Frieza Terrifying Transformation. Auto when this card is removed from your battle area by an opponent's skill, draw two cards. That's pretty cool. Just, you know, basically free benefit. 
Activate main, pay a green, choose up to one green, freeze a card, then it costs a four in your hand or drop area and play it on top of this card in active mode. So the freeze that we just saw, you can basically cheat it in for one less energy. This is a two drop 15K, so it's pretty good. On your next turn, you can pay one and then you can keep the rest of your energy open for whatever you wanna keep it open for, defense or other plays, and then play a four drop Frieza. That's pretty strong. Bulma Life on Namek. Auto when this card is played, look at the top five cards of your deck. Add up to one green Unison card at the specified cost of two or one green sand card, the energy cost of three or less among them, add it to your hand and shuffle your deck. So the weird thing about these searchers, like it's nice to have searchers for your unison cards, but if there aren't a ton of great unison cards that are of the two cost, then only looking at top five is not very good in terms of consistency. But as we'll see in tomorrow's video, there are two really good two drop um, unison cards that you can use. So in green, this is a little bit better in blue. The two drop unisons are sometimes very specific to the type of deck you're playing. So just keep that in mind. I think the green searcher is good. Blue, not so much. Kind of depends on what the unison cards actually do. Zarbon super combo, very simple. It's cool to have it, I guess. It might be searchable in some ways. I guess it is searchable if you're playing Lemon Lime Frieza with the uh, with the one drop Avenging Clan Frieza from like set one or two. Ginyu the Body Snatcher, four drop 20k, double strike, permanent. This card gets minus 10,000 power during your opponent's turn. Activate main, choose one battle card you gain control of from your opponent with one of your card skills and place in the owner's drop area, then play this card from your hand. So we know we're looking for some type of Ginyu that does this. Auto, if your leader card is a green Ginyu Force card, when this card's played, choose all green Ginyu Force cards in your battle area. They get plus 10,000 power for the turn. Frieza, vanilla, pretty cool to have. Sun Gohan potential uh, unlocked, unique blocker. So this is gonna be a one drop play you can use right out of set 10 to get your Goku leader awakened. Permanent, if your leader card is green, you have a green unison card at the specified cost of two in play. You can play this card from your hand without paying its energy cost. That's really nice, actually, because like you do want to see this on turn one, but if you don't happen to see it until later, you want to play your unison on two like every single game. So you can get your unison on board on turn two and then get this on board as well, and then you can get yourself awakened by blocking an attack. That's really good. There's actually a really cool way that they're bringing blockers kind of back into relevancy. Ultimate Power Piccolo. Auto if your leader card is a green Sun Goku card, and there are many green Sun Goku cards you can use this with, not just the one from the set. When this card is played, choose one, draw one card, or this card gains plus 15,000 power for the turn. All right, they're giving us a lot of one drop 15k attackers. There's this card, there's Demigra, that's making green look pretty aggressive, which is good. I mean, it gives green somewhat of a new identity. We haven't seen mono green do very well in the meta. Like I talked about before, there was the cell chain, but that's very specific. So if green's gonna be this bit more of aggressive color, that could be pretty cool. Ginyu, Backbone of the Force, 4-drop, Activate Main. If you have at least one Raccoon, Jace, Birder, and Guldo card in play, play this card from your hand, and you can't play copies of this card for the duration of the turn. Auto when this card is played. Choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards and gain control of it. If you gain control of a card, give control of this card to your opponent. Interesting. I think this card could have been a 10k power. That would have been kind of funny, actually, because, you know, Ginyu does hurt himself before he switches bodies with Goku. But, uh, yeah, taking control of any one battle card... That can be really powerful. You can take like, you know, anything, a five drop, a six drop, depending on what your opponent's playing, gain control of it, attack with it, do whatever you want to do with it. And then you can replace it with the Ginyu we just saw a second ago. That's actually a really cool thing you can do with this deck. So that's looking pretty neat. Raccoon the Musclehead. So we're finally going to see what the Ginyu Force cards do. And that'll pretty much tell us if this new Ginyu leader is worth playing. So two drop 15k unique. That already kind of hurts because that already hurts your leader's awaken ability of having four or more Ginyus. You can't have four or more of, I guess, the same Ginyu Force. Auto, if your leader card is a Ginyu Force card, when this card is played, choose it to one green Ginyu Force card, then it costs a two in your hand and play it. So same thing we've kind of seen before, the Ginyu Forces putting themselves into play from different areas. These ones are a little different than the red ones though, because these actually have 15k power, which makes them much more threatening than the red ones we saw. Man, what was that? A uh, couple, set, couple sets ago now. Jace second in command. I didn't know Jace was actually second in command. Unique auto when this card attacks. Look at the top three cards from your deck. Add up to one Ginyu Force card among them to your hand. Then place the remaining cards on the top and or bottom of your deck in any order. So this is important here, the and or, because with the Terminate Power Arena ruling, you can only put them on top or bottom. You cannot mix and match. But the way this card's worded, it should work as a mix and match kind of thing. Birder, fastest in the universe. Two drop 15k. Unique blocker. Auto at the end of your turn. Switch card to active mode. Then look at the top three cards of your deck and place them on top or bottom of your deck in any order. So you're gonna want this card to basically rearrange so you can get your Ginyu Forces lead your Ginyu Force leader's effect off properly. Guldo, Psycho, Psychic, two drop, 15k, unique, activate main. If your leader card's a Ginyu Force card and you discard this card from your hand, 
look it up the top of your cards on top of your deck and place them on top or bottom of your deck in any order this card's weird because it's a straight minus one that's really unfortunate uh that, that is really really unfortunate actually so you're going to take the minus one you're going to rearrange the top of your deck you can get the leader effect off but the minus one man that really doesn't seem like it's going to be worth it activate main one to return look at the top five cards from top of your deck and place them uh, on the top or bottom of your deck in any order so i guess this effect is much better because you're able to activate main every single turn rearrange the top of your deck but the activate main from the hand that seems like it's gonna be pretty rough if this is a one drop it would actually be so much better because this is actually competing in your curve for your unison effects but uh, i think there's some other cards that might fix this later on dodoria the cold-blooded auto add one card from life to your hand when this card attacks gains plus 10 000 power and double strike for the turn kind of weird that we're getting this we just got one of these in draft box five for green but i guess for frieza army it is searchable so that's pretty cool zarbon victory over beauty three drop counter attack and get the attack and play this card auto when this card is played during your opponent's turn choose one of your opponent's battle cards ko it then shoot it to one card in your opponent's hand and discard it so we do have a two drop negate attack that does ko a battle card but this is like a step up from that so for one extra energy you also get your opponent to discard a card so this is pretty good value i can actually see this card being played in certain decks not every deck but certain decks it does seem pretty good three energy 20k body ko a battle card and discard a card that does seem pretty good for the energy you're paying frieza the power monger deflect unique auto if your opponent has three or more energy when this card is removed from a battle area by a skill or ko'd note that that does work with successor add up to one green extra card of energy cost of one or less from your drop area to your hand activate battle pay a green and two colorless this card gets plus 15,000 power and double strike for the turn again think about nende wish you can play it like that um but overall this card's pretty good and it is pretty cool that it works with successor a little bit of synergy from last set two drop blue impulse permanent if your leader card is green you have a green unison card in play reduce energy cost of this card in your hand by one activate main if your opponent has played a battle card this turn choose all of your opponent's battle cards and ko them some punishment for your opponent playing cards on your turn we're seeing a lot of that in set 10. it's kind of a thing that i guess bandai is kind of steering away from like away from the raiders war cries away from the vegeta the cruels away from the topos they're probably still gonna be very good cards in the meta because as the green player you are kind of running a risk of playing this card because it can clunk but it is still quite good one star ball parasitic darkness finally getting the dark dragon ball is permanent this card gets dark dragon ball in all areas activate battle choose one of your cards it gets plus 5,000 power for the battle activate main choose one frieza card with energy cost of four in your battle area and place this card under it play up to one green frieza zeno card in your deck or hand on top of the chosen card in active mode then shuffle your deck if you look through it so basically a free play of a new frieza type card so we saw a four drop frieza and we saw a four drop Frieza uh frieza zeno so we know that this works straight up with those cards vegeta the lone prince very good card here super combo you cannot play this card from skills with any area uh if your lead card is green you like to four or less when this card is using a combo draw one and then auto if your lead card is mono green when this card's played your opponent chooses one card in their hand and discards it so actually what's really cool is this works with raditz because in raditz this is searchable your leader is mono green and yeah frieza definitely needs some reworking so this can actually kind of work in a raditz deck that is pretty cool one drop krillin potential unlocked permanent during your opponent's turn if your leader card is a green sun goku card and lace it four or less increase energy cost of this card in all areas by three that's really nice because there is a krillin card too that just blank like plainly increases in all areas if you're awakened period and it's nice you can still play this card even if your leader gets awakened early auto when this card's played choose one you can either search for a unison card or gain blocker till the start of your next turn very good utility there this actually seems very playable in the deck with this and then four of that gohan we saw earlier that's pretty consistent in terms of getting a blocker for turn one frieza dark infestation four drop 15k double strike unique auto if your opponent has three or more energy when this card's removed from the battle area by a skill or ko to add up to one green extra card with energy cost of one or less from your drop area to your hand activate main place the card in the owner's drop area that will have to be from the field choose to one card in your opponent's hand and discard it this is again probably pretty good in frieza wish because you can get this onto the board for free with the frieza wish card and then you can keep recycling it place in the drop area opponent ditches one you recycle your wish card get this back on the board so this does seem actually very good dodoria bring with power one drop counterplay one drop counterplay we don't see that very often if your leader card is mono green and you have a green using card in play if the battle card being played is only cost of two or less it's placed in the owner's drop area instead of being played then play this card this card can actually see a lot of play i can see this card being very very good it's just depending on the format if there are good two drops good one drops this is going to be very good 
Dark Death Ball, two drop counter play. If you have a green unison card in play, if the battle card being played is at a cost of four or less, it's placing on a drop barrier instead of being played. Then choose one of your opponent's battle cards at a cost of one and KO it. So a little bit of an added benefit there to make it not just another preemptive strike, but you do also have the ability to, to activate it for free if your leader's mono green and you discard two other cards from your hand. Intensive training, Sun Goku, four drop, deflect, barrier, activate main slash battle. If your leader card is a green, Sun Goku, you send a total of five Sun Gohan Youth, Vegeta, Bulma, Krillin, and or Piccolo cards from your drop area to your warp. Choose one mono green Sun Goku card with any cost of five in your deck or hand. Play it on top of this card, then shuffle. So we know we have the Clash of Fates Goku can use for this. They also give us a Goku to use in the set. Super Saiyan Sun Goku, Pride of the Sands, Double Strike, Permanent. This card can't be removed from battle area by skills. That's already very good. Auto, if there is a Sun Goku card with an energy cost of four under this card, and this card is in rest mode, when your opponent plays a battle card with an energy cost of five or less, they choose two cards in their hand and discard them. Very, very cool effect. Auto, when this card is played, choose all of your opponent's battle cards, ignoring barrier, and KO them. Very, very powerful card, the rare slot. I'm pretty surprised this is not a super rare. Uh, it is definitely seemingly very strong. So guys, that's going to wrap up today's video. Tomorrow, we will go over the starter deck stuff. We will go over the super rares, kind of previewing, previewing them now for you guys. But I want to know you guys think in the comments below. Can green be meta? Can mono green be meta? You know, not counting the cell chain. What do you guys think? Let me know. Thank you for watching. I will see you guys next time.